we invested about 130 million US dollars, um, roughly, because the, the, the value changes all, all over the, all the time. Uh, the portfolio value for that 100 projects is now worth about 7 billion US dollars, even at today's market value. So it did like about 60x something. So that turned out to be really done really well. Over the last year, we actually sped that up. Over the last year, we invested in another like 60, 70 projects. Um, and uh, the ticket size is a little bit bigger now. So in the bear markets, we actually were more, are much more uh, aggressive. Um, we see there's more opportunities, better opportunities. But the point that you were asking before was uh, we just hold the coins. Uh, we almost never sell. Um, so Luna, we invested at 3 million US dollars. At peak market value, it went to 1.6 billion. Um, and then it dropped probably to about $3,000 now. Uh, mm. But we still hold it. Um, so, uh, so why do we do that? Um, we, I don't want our team to get into a position of where we pick tops and try to sell every two years. Or every, like, what are we going to sell today? Uh, if, if we have that kind of mentality, then everything we hold is going to be short term. Uh, I want to hold for like 10, 20 years. We're forming the um, industry uh, recovery fund. Well, actually, I got a lot of interest from over the last couple of days for people to, that want to contribute, and also for people who, who need help. So uh, over the next couple of weeks or so, we'll try to hash everything out and try to push that out. So we, wanna, we want the strong industry players today to protect other good industry players that might just be hurt short term. Um, so uh, that's not to say we can save everybody. Um, if, if, they're, if, if a project is mismanaged on multiple fronts, then we, we won't be able to help them anyway. Xin Peng Zhao, known in the industry as CZ, is today one of the leading ambassadors of the CryptoVision. Not only because he is Binance CEO, but also because he started as an investor on Bitcoin a couple of years ago, just like we did, and became one of the wealthiest people in the space. In today's video, he will give his opinion on what's happening to crypto and what he and Binance are doing to help protect people and get this industry mainstream. Also, he will give his advice on how to invest in this industry and how he's getting impressive returns even in bear markets. Of course, knowing how to invest in bear markets is extremely important, so pay close attention until the end. So I think given what happened in the last week or so, well, first of all, I'm not a smoker. I don't throw cigarettes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and it's just not very good for the industry. It's not good for anybody. A lot of consumer investors are hurt. Um, the uh, confidence in the industry is shaken. And um, going forward, we're going to face a lot more challenges. Regulators are going to scrutinize this industry a lot more. Um, and, but that actually not, might not be a bad thing. Um, in order to rebuild conf uh, confidence or um, trust, um, as you mentioned, we are supposed to be in a trustless industry where the technology is supposed to um, just remove the dependency on trust. But today, the industry is still so early that most users still use centralized platforms uh, because most people are still more comfortable with a username and a password. So as a, uh, Binance.com as a centralized, was one of the largest central pla centralized platforms. We need to do a number of things. I think for the industry players, we need to be more transparent. So uh, anything that can improve transparency, uh, proof of reserves, uh, disclosing our hard wallet and cold wallet addresses, uh, be more transparent with our processes, um, stronger governance. So I think there's a transparency aspect of it. Um, there are technologies that will help us to do that, like proof of reserves, Merkle trees, et cetera. Um, there's regu regulations, uh, working closely with regulators, uh, working closely with auditors. Um, and so that's one aspect, of, one aspect of it. We need to educate people on financial literacy, on how to not chase super high yields, uh, not be able to differentiate uh, what's a good behavior or what's a bad behavior. So, um, they, so there's quite a lot of stuff that we need to do. But yes, some of them will rely on technology, uh, regulations, and also education. Uh, that's probably a lot more. Yeah. Today, Binance focuses on being more transparent and educating people to make the right decisions. Now, the company moved to the Middle East to keep expanding, and this is why. We have the largest team in the UAE globally. So we have about 600 people in UAE. And um, actually, yesterday, uh, we were granted the custody license and also the, um, uh, as, um, the um, what do you call it, um, fund management license. Sorry, I wasn't sure of the right, right terminology. 
So we got granted two licenses yesterday um, here from Abu Dhabi. So uh, everything, uh, everything here moves faster. Um, and they're very strict, but they're very, uh, they, they, they embrace uh, innovation. Uh, they understand that you know, as much as this place produces oil, they cannot, we cannot rely on oil forever. Um, and you've got to build new industries. And what's the best new industry to build is the fintech industry. And if you talk about fintech, uh, blockchain is the technology that will power fintech in the future. Um, you, uh, so I think the leadership here is extremely aware and extremely uh, smart about the strategies. And also, everything's very efficient here. So doing things here are just faster than most, in most other countries. So I just gave you the example of um, you know, if, if your passport is expired, um, you go to the airport. Here, if you're, if you're a US citizen, they say, wait for 10 minutes, and they give you a new passport. Whereas in most other countries, they'll send you back home, and you have to spend another month uh, or two weeks to get your new passport. So everything happens faster here. So um, it's, it's a great place to be in. CZ also goes through the importance of having regulation to prevent bad players like FTX from existing and scamming people and explains the difference between the regulation and management necessary in crypto compared to traditional banks. In traditional industries, it's very complex. It's almost 100% of banks uh, run on fractional reserves. So people, w w when, when you read the Bloomberg, ar Bloomberg article, when they talk about reserves, they look at the total US dollar value for the reserves and whether that covers your asset. That's a wrong way to do it. You don't look at the total US dollar value. You look at, you just got a 100% reserves for each asset that your users hold with you. You don't convert. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't look at total US dollar value. So um, uh, traditional banks run on fractional reserves. Uh, in crypto exchanges, should never do that. So um, that's something that we don't want to borrow from traditional finance, um, et cetera. So, um, I think we want to borrow quite a lot of the uh, how, uh, transparency audit uh, aspect of it, KYC, AML, et cetera. Um, regulations need to be adapted for this industry. Today, too, too many regulators are still of too much of the credify mindset. They actually need to get more of a crypto mindset. So um, I think um, uh, communication, education, both ways uh, is very important. Um, speaking of, you, you mentioned US regulations. US is actually one of the most advanced support for crypto exchanges in terms of banking, banking services. In the US, there's an ACH protocol. Users, users are authorized once. The exchanges can deduct money from the user's bank accounts every month automatically. Uh, this actually caused some problems in the case of FTX. Even after when they're down, the system were trying to take money from users' banks uh, through the ACH protocol. But at the same time, if, if we look at US, one of the most well-regulated markets in the world, made off happen. Yeah. Madoff is 10 times bigger than FTX, right? So, um, how, so that shows like regulation doesn't prevent uh, scammers or fraudsters. So uh, it just reduces it. So uh, we can borrow from it, but we, we can't just say, look, regulation is going to fix all of this. It will reduce it. It's important. Uh, but we have we got to have the right, right expectations. Not only that, but Binance CEO is also worried and trying to help people who were affected by these Black Swan events. We're forming the um, Industry uh, Recovery Fund. Well, actually, I got a lot of interest from over the last couple of days for people to, that want to contribute and also for people who, who need help. So um, over the next couple of weeks or so, we'll try to hash everything out and try to push that out. So we, wanna, we want the strong industry players today to protect other good industry players that might just be hurt short term. Um, so uh, that's not to say we can save everybody. Um, if, if, they're, if, if a project is mismanaged on multiple fronts, then we, we won't be able to help them anyway. Um, the, other thing we're, um, the other thing we're trying to do is uh, we want to form a global industry as association for industry uh, players, uh, exchanges, wallets, blockchain developers, etc. cetera. Uh, wh when we talk to multiple regulators all around the world, the, cons the con consistent feedback we get is, there's no common voice for the industry. They talk to 10 different players, they all say different things. Um, and they all act differently, they all do things differently. So I think having a common, and then the industry players, we gotta talk to like you know, 200 regulators all around the world. Um, having an association that establishes some be uh, best practices is actually helpful on both sides. So that's something else we're doing. This is something that we were planning like even a couple, a few months back. But now, given what's happened, we want to accelerate this and sort of uh, do this. Apparently, Binance is still a safe place to be, so people are still asking if he also made some mistakes on his path to growth. Let's see what he has to say about this. 
originally I, I would have said like, well, we probably could have moved a little bit faster or a little bit more aggressive, but given what happened last week, I think uh, that might not have been a good idea. So I think um, prudent risk management and sort of going, doing things step by step is actually more important. Um, I think my lesson is really, uh, well, so I got into crypto in middle 2013. I started buying Bitcoin in, like, in reasonable sizes um, beginning of 2014. And then um, I joined a different crypto exchange, uh, left, um, joined a wallet company uh, for a while. And then I did my own technology uh, startup for, uh, for two years before I started Binance. So those four years in crypto that I was not part of Binance. And then over the last five years or so, I was you know, with, uh, doing Binance. Um, I think my philosophy is just do things in the most basic, most simple, and most effective way. Uh, so just cut out all the, all the other uh, what we call uh, fancy stuff, right? Um, all this fluff, uh, just cut it out. Just focus on building a very strong product, very good service, customer service, uh, customer support, and make sure that your system's secure, your system runs well. And that's pretty, and also um, in our industry, it's very, for Binance at least, uh, we have a third thing which I think actually helped us to rise to the top, uh, is we protect users. We, we don't just talk about it, it's like two words, it's very simple but we make decisions at each step of the way um, that we protect you, and the users know. So this is why the users uh, stick with us. We have very loyal communities. Um, even like a year and a half ago, Binance was getting regulatory warnings here and there. Our market share grown. Uh, users didn't leave us because of that. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, so for us, uh, it's, it's very simple. There's, there's, there's no magical pills, and we just slowly and steadily build. And I think for the industry as well, we kind of heard in the last week or so, um, or actually the last year or so, um, but the technology is not going away. Uh, the, strong player, the strong players will actually um, will have more opportunities to do, to do more things. So it, that's kind of how, how we view it. Yeah. And finally, we got to the elephant in the room. What is CZ investing in right now? What's his advice to profit from bear markets and how's he spreading his money? Over the last three, four years, um, our venture arm invested, the first three years we invested about 100 projects. Um, and uh, we invested about 130 million US dollars, um, roughly, because the, the, the value changes all, all, over, uh, all the time. Uh, the portfolio value for that 100 projects is now worth about 7 billion US dollars, even at today's market value. So it did like about 60x something. So that turned out to be really done really well. Over the last year, we actually sped that up. Over the last year, we invested in another like 60, 70 projects. Um, and uh, the ticket size is a little bit bigger now. So in the bear market, we actually were more, are much more uh, aggressive. Um, we see there's more opportunities, better opportunities. But the point that you were asking before was uh, we just hold the coins. Uh, we almost never sell. Um, so Luna, we invested at 3 million US dollars. At peak market value, it went to 1.6 billion, um, and then it dropped probably to about $3,000 now. Uh, mm. But we still hold it. Um, so uh, so if, why do we do that? Um, we, I don't want our team to get into a position of where we pick tops and try to sell every two years. Or every, like, what are we going to sell today? Uh, if, if we have that kind of mentality, then everything we hold is going to be short term. Uh, I want to hold for like 10, 20 years. And then I want to, so we already have projects that's done 1,000x. So for, we only need one project to do 200x to cover the cost of the rest. So our cost is covered. Um, even lo lo losing, theoretically, $1.6 billion on, on, on the book. And, and we still hold a bag of FTT, um, which, which was worth like a couple hundred million dollars like a week ago. Um, and um, so, but we, it's okay. We, we were going to sell it. So that's one of the very few ones we're going to sell, and we said we're going to sell it. And, but now we still hold a large por portion of it, and we stopped selling. I want to hold for 10 years. There will be a few that will do a million X. Um, and that, th that few will make up for the rest of the portfolio. So that's kind of our philosophy. But does CZ does the investments himself? So we still have a process called an investment committee, I'm sure you like IC, uh, where uh, the smaller projects, like I think below like $3 million, I don't get involved. Uh, if the investment is more than $3 million, I will be invited to the IC. Uh, it will be a project whose name I've never heard of, most likely. Um, it will be like the technology I never heard of. So I'm, I'm relying on like two pieces of paper. Like we, I try to ask them to condense down to like a two-pager uh, for investment IC uh, memo. Um, and on, honestly, I wouldn't know very much about that project. So um, 
and if the team, I, I may ask one or two questions, and then we'll have a vote. But if the majority of the team says we're going to go for it, I usually just yield. Um, so I try not to make them, those decisions. But I'm still involved in some of the slightly larger ticket size uh, projects. Um, and this is also the reason where when people come to me to pitch projects, you know, you're an investor, you listen to pitches. I don't listen to pitches because I can't make, I'm not smart enough to judge whether a project is good or not based on an elevator pitch um, on 30 seconds. And I need to, for me to understand a project, I need to look at the white paper, download the products, use it, follow the project team, look, get involved in the community. That takes me like, you know, months. Um, I unfortunately don't have the time to do that. So pitching projects to me doesn't work. Um, I won't remember them. You guys being the owner of a company like Binance and the voice behind the crypto community simultaneously, isn't there a conflict of interest? What if he's trying to grow his own company and doesn't care about us? Let's hear what he has to say about this. Um, what's good for the industry is good for Binance. So uh, for Binance today, given our size in the industry, if we take market share away from a smaller competitor, it may increase our, it may increase our volume by 1%. It's not that meaningful. Whereas if we can help grow the industry by 10x, 100x, 1,000x, which I think is totally possible, uh, then our size grows together with that because you know our growth has been pretty much consistent with the industry. So from that point of view, um, I actually I spend a lot more time like sort of uh, talking with uh, head of states, politicians, regulators, trying to grow the industry. So that that's actually more helpful for Binance um, as as far as my efforts concerned. Um, I actually spend. I don't spend that much time on the day-to-day -day operations of Binance anymore. We have a very strong team. I fly around all the time. Uh, I was in Indonesia yesterday, landed last night, and he here now. So um, our team runs all of that. Uh, there's always a somewhat conflict of, of interest, in, in potentially. We believe this video helped us know how straightforward CZ is and how he seems to be one of the few big players in the space who cares and is trying hard. What do you think? Do you agree with us? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please leave a like, subscribe, and check our pinned comment. Thanks.